In this video, I'll show you how I replaced my oven. It's pretty straightforward. All you need is a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, electric tester pen, and possibly some electrical tape or multimeter, depending on the job. This video is for educational purposes only, and copying anything in this video is done so at your own risk. The first thing you need to do is isolate the oven on your brake panel. As you can see on mine, it was labeled cooker, so I flipped that off. And to be doubly sure, I also flipped the switch off in the kitchen that feeds the oven. You can then unscrew the fixing screws either side that hold it into the cabinet if you have this same type of single oven, and then pull it out of the unit, making sure that you don't snag the electrical cable at the back. You can then remove the cable from the terminal block with a screwdriver. Unfortunately, I didn't record this part, but here's what you do. Firstly, make sure that your oven is not live by either trying to turn it on or by testing the live wire feeding the terminal block with a tester pen. In my case, I disconnected the cable from the terminal block of the old oven the night before the new one was due to arrive as the delivery team were collecting my old oven. So I thought I'd just be plugging in the old cable into the new terminal block but that turned out not to be an option as the old wire gauge was a lot thicker and wouldn't have properly fit into this new terminal block. So that meant that I had to remove the old wire from this junction box, which just opens with a screw. But yours will likely be something different with a dedicated outlet. The reason mine is on this junction box is because whoever installed the kitchen put the oven and hob on the same circuit, which isn't the best idea, but that's for another day. To remove the cable, I simply cut away the electrical tape that was holding it to the hob wire. I then unscrewed the three wires holding down the wires inside to remove the old cable. I could then bring in the new oven wires and screw those into place into the correct socket. It's crucial that you make sure that the wires go in the right place and also that they're screwed down nice and tight. So once you've done that, give each wire a forceful tug to make sure it's properly connected. So if you've got a junction box like this or anything else that's got other wires that you've unscrewed, tug each one individually and make sure that they're nice and secure. When the wires were all fixed in, I then screwed the junction box cover back on and I also made sure to test all the screws were nice and tight on the terminal block as well, which required both a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver. One thing I did very wrong when filming was taping the wires back together with clear sellotape. I did this just to hold the two cables together while I screwed back up the junction box as I didn't have any electrical tape to hand. And as this whole bit took way longer than I thought, I didn't properly film how the inner cupboard part eventually looked. But this was removed and it's not suitable for use anywhere near an oven because of course it's not designed for that heat. Anyway, with the wires in, you can then lift your oven back into position, slide it in, put your fixing screws in to hold it in place, and then remove all the plastic packaging parts inside that it comes with, like this styrofoam. You can then flip the switch on the breaker panel to feed power back to the oven, and if you have a kitchen switch, you can turn that back on, and then turn the oven on to see if it works. New ovens do need to be turned on high for an extended period of time before you cook in them, because they need to burn off some of the chemical residues on the shelves and the walls, etc. Just put it on high about 240 degrees for about one or two hours, maybe once or twice the day before you cook. You can turn your hob extractor on, open a window and let the oven vent after you've had it on for an hour or two by just leaving the oven door open. Any electricians watching, feel free to comment below if I've done anything wrong. Please don't forget to drop a like if you found this helpful and for more how-to videos, subscribe.